Hi there everyone, here at the Royal Society these are two really big names in the field of mathematics, astronomy, physics. There we have Sir James Jeans and if you haven't heard of him you will have heard of this one. This is Sir Isaac Newton. Now portraits like this, paintings, are pretty typical here at the Royal Society. They hang all over the walls. But today we're going to show you two depictions of these two scientists in a way you may not have seen them before. In death. Let's go and meet Keith and we'll talk more about it. So here I am, I'm with Keith and appropriately we're here in the officers room at the Royal Society because the two scientists, Jeans and Newton, were also both officers of the Society. That's right, so Newton, uh, very famously president of the Royal Society, Jeans, physical secretary. So he looks after the A side of the organisation, so the, the physical sciences. I told you we were going to show these two famous scientists in death. So here, in front of me, quite extraordinary objects. These are the death masks of Isaac Newton and James Jeans. Let's start with Newton. What have we got here, Keith? What's the story behind this? Newton died in 1727, and it was customary to take death masks, partly to memorialise the person concerned, but there was a very practical reason for these things, in that sculptors very often wanted a template, if you want, for uh, producing busts of leading figures. Newton is, of course, one, uh, and therefore uh, having a, a, something to refer to would be very useful for producing artwork. So it's a, it's a memorial of Newton, but it's a very practical thing too. We know that this particular death mask was owned by a sculptor called Robiliac, a very famous sculptor, uh, and in fact we have a, a marble bust of Newton by him. And they would produce thing, these things uh, by a, a quite an interesting technique. They would first of all put a, a thread down the centre of the face, and you can probably just see the, the remnants of it there in the cast. You can see a line running down the nose. And then they would place wax over the top of that, and while the, the wax was still relatively soft, they would draw off the thread so that the, the mask, the, the, the negative image, if you like, of the face would, would fall up into two equal halves. Then they would rejoin them, and they could take positive copies from that template. Keith, I've seen this a few times over the years working with people like you. I've never held it. Can I hold it? Yes, it's very uh, delicate. So if you just put your hands over there and give it a bit of support yeah. uh, and lift it up like that. Okay, so hand here. Yeah, just and right inside so you're supporting right as much it. as possible. There we go. I know one of the other librarians here, Rupert, who you would have seen in some of our other videos, has a recurring nightmare that he drops this mask. He has to handle it a lot in the course of his job and he has anxiety about dropping it one day. So I'm gonna put this down. Oh gosh, wow. We have another death mask here. We can actually tell you something about the story of this one because it was actually documented. Joy Adamson, mm -hmm. who's very famous in her own right, in her autobiography, she actually briefly writes about James Jeans's death Yes. and how this death mask came to be. I think the background to the story is that Joy Adamson is at James Jeans's house. Obviously she was a friend also with um, James Jeans's wife. When their guests had left, Susie, who was the wife, went upstairs to put the children to bed and I stayed talking to James, who was leaning against the organ. Suddenly his face grew very pale and his breathing became laboured. I suggested he should loosen his collar I had been told that James suffered from angina and that when he had had previous attacks, Susie had given him injections. This time she arrived too late. He died as she entered the room. Neither she nor I had ever been so close to death. During the next few hours, James's face was transformed by a sort of spiritual radiance, which I felt far more than his books expressed his genius. I felt I had come nearer to understanding the spiritualizing quality of the transition from life to death. So impressed was I that I suggested to Susie that a death mask should be made. Jeans's death mask seems very much more immediate to me uh, and rather more touching than Newton's. I find it a little bit more difficult to look at. It's more human. You see more, it is, yes. you know, you see teeth and you see wrinkles and you see 
you know, it looks a lot more like a person. I tend to be slightly uneasy about showing this death mask. We, we very rarely get it out. We certainly don't exhibit it. But in a way, I think that, that Jeans, as a scientist, might have understood the motives behind it and the fact that it is an objective representation of something that we very rarely confront. But just to be clear, this is something that the family has donated. They want to be kept and yes. sort of uh, yeah. kept forever and, and protected right. by the society. I, and in just the same way that Newton's uh, death mask was made by a sculptor and therefore in its way it's a, it's a kind of work of art. There we go, something a bit different for you today, something reasonably sensitive, but again, let's remember, these are two giants of mathematics, astronomy and physics, great men who did great things, and we can remember them in this unusual way. Hmm. Queen Victoria signed that, and we're, we're standing here looking at it and touching it. This is... This is amazing. And there's someone else on this page you want to talk about. Go on. Yes, briefly, uh, the only royal president of the Royal Society, Frederick Augustus, Duke of Sussex. So the Royal Society was especially royal. We were really royal. It was really royal. Period, yeah. Royal squared. So to give you some idea of just how long Queen Victoria was on the throne, look at all of these people being elected to the Royal Society under her patronage. 